Like I say, normal, I don't know what normal is, really. I just know how I am. I'm a romantic, okay. and, but other people aren't. And apparently she needed that kind of uh, forcefulness of personality to make it okay for her. It wasn't like she went home bruised and bleeding or anything like that, you know. It's a scenario, but a role playing, I guess, is what you call it. And probably what they do with sexual surrogates today, officially, if you've got some problem, they meet you up with somebody and you role play it out. Apparently, this is a big business out there. I don't know what they do out there now. I've been in 20 years. Oh, Lee, you she thinking of undressing in front of the window? Well, she was another girl. She went to Stranahan, and I went to St. Thomas, and uh, Stranahan is a secular high school. And she was more uh, liberated, you know, and uh, she got off on uh, doing her little strip tease in front of the, her window at night for myself and Pete Maddock and Topper Keith and the boys of the neighborhood, right? And she was entertaining. And I always felt that was kind of uh, slutty, you know? <laughs> So that's not the way that uh, good Catholic girls behave. It, it, she wasn't a Catholic girl. She was brought up in a different system, and uh, she was uh, trying to attract male attention. Her name was Lee Hainline. Well, naturally, I get turned on just like everybody else, because mostly it was a, a group thing. All the guys are over, we're playing cards or watching TV or whatever, you know. And Lee, we'd say, oh, it's getting about 10 o'clock. Lee would be up in the window, you know. We'd go out in the yard and watch. You know, I'm not, I'm not judgmental. I went over to Lee's house and made a move on her. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously she was up there dancing around uh, looking for some attention. I think I gave her attention. I went up and uh, she invited me right up to the bedroom. I had a good time with Lee. I was in college when I was with Senator Long. She was in high school, but I was in college. I met her, <clears throat> I met her at a high school dance. And I was at the dance with a girl by the name of Dee Cunningham. And I looked over there and I saw Sandra and she was sitting there. And I, she looked awfully familiar. And I went up to her and I said, uh, don't I know you from somewhere? <laughs> it's a great opening line, right? But I just had to do it. I was compelled. I just knew her from somewhere, it seemed like. And she said, no, I don't think so, you know. <laughs> well, eventually I found out what her name was. I asked somebody what her name was, that it was Sandy Stewart. And I went home. And I, and I looked in the phone book, and I went down the Stewarts, and I went through every S-T-U-A-R-T trying to find it, and every S-T-E-W-A-R-T trying to find it. And finally, I tracked her down. I think I asked one of the guys who went to a Stranahan, you know. But uh, I called her up, and I got a date, man. You know, I'm not bashful. If I like them, I call them up and say, let's go out. And that's what I did with her. And we hit it off very well. and. Uh, we went steady for about a year. A lovely relationship. That's right, around the end of 65, maybe September or so, because she was going off to New College, and I was staying at the college where I went here in, in Florida. New College is on the other side of the state. So we broke it off. No, she was going away to school, and uh, there, there's no, you can't go steady when somebody's in uh, Tampa and you're in Fort Lauderdale. It was very amicable. It's that we had a great time together, and it's time to move on, uh, you know, complicate things by trying to remain steadies. But there was no animosity mm -hmm. or anything like that. I was hurt, naturally, you know, because I take a much deeper interest in my relationships. Sandy's, uh, she's uh, flighty and superficial in her relationships, and she moves around, chung, 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 bounces around from one to another, whereas I'm a one-man uh, one woman type of person because that's the way that I was raised and trained in the Catholic Church. I always blame it on the Catholic Church, just like Frank Zappa and every other Catholic guy that gets hooked into this one man relationship. He said, yeah, I've got to blame it on the nuns and the priests because that's what they taught us. And uh, I was just not taught to be promiscuous. If you had a relationship that was emotional and sexual with somebody, it was a commitment and you made a commitment to them, and uh, you were their friend and their lover, and uh, you didn't stray.